Neon lights. Are they hard? Are they easy? Welcome to another speed pen champs. In this video, we are going to see this incredible process of this icon of a school OC and him in a neon sci-fi cyberpunk city. So the first thing we start is just with a basic sketch to you know exactly where everything is going. Oh, this is a character, you got fur, you got clothes, and there's the background. Everything's there, well positioned. Well, 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 amazing, amazing. And for the back, many people will have trouble with the back. Do you know what I thought about the background? City. City, automatically, I will think horizontal and vertical lines. They domain everything. So whenever we're going for a background, vertical and horizontal, especially vertical, okay? Especially vertical on this angle that we have here. And then we add some base colors. And after the base colors, you can see I'm already adding light. No details. This is different from my normal process. Normally, I try to find all of the things that are going to happen and then I start adding all of this light. But this one is different. This one was really trying to challenge myself. This one was like, haha, let's try to finish all of this in one sitting and I did it. I don't know if I'll ever do it again. Don't try to do it, okay? Just don't. <laughs> don't do it. This is really tiresome. The next day you will not be able to just get out of bed. But let's keep going on. This ambient light that you see here, I can 100% guarantee you, I would never imagine this solely on my imagination, solely on my thinking process. No, I was there searching for reference, the best reference possible. I changed my way of working. You guys gonna notice on the last speed paint and on this one. I changed totally my way of working. I'm much more serious about gathering exactly the reference that I need. I was not so serious on that. I would get like 10 re different references, maybe, but I'm saying getting exactly one with the ambient light that you want. Ambient light. That's the word, ambient light. I would focus on anatomy and background, blah, blah, blah. But ambient light? That's something that I started working on and I have seen a huge improvement on my work. And I recommend you doing that too. Of course, if you know how to do it. If you don't, comment down below. Hey Gab, I want you to show how to use ambient light reference and how to apply it on your artwork. There is a blue light coming from up. I would never ever think <laughs> that would going to happen and where it's going to hit, how it's going to hit. All of those things was a process doing inside of my head, using my reference. Second light coming downwards, the pink light. If we have a cool color up, I was like, mm, warm light below. That's how we create balance in our peak, okay? And there's also behind the character a blue light. Blue and pink. But on the fur up above in the head, it's mainly blue. So after we selected all of those colors, hey, here we go light, hey, here we're receiving light from down, and here we're receiving light from upwards, and here we're receiving exactly on the silhouette, also called ring light. Now I started to detail everything and use some smudge too on the school. I tried to make everything extra, extra smooth because I was not like, oh, let's already add details and everything. No, 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 no. First, I was removing the sketch lines. This is something when you don't make a sketch that it is refined, that it is perfect in every single way, you need to remove each sketch line. So to do this in the most fast way that I like to do is to make everything smooth, already place the correct place for the light, for the shadows, and use a lot of lasso too. To be able to draw faster, I started doing something that I would I didn't like it to do, but it's necessary if I want to become faster, if I I want to become someone better on drawing that it is using lasso 2 on every silhouette every silhouette gaps every single silhouette and if you want to become faster too i recommend you doing this how this works you have like the the lower jaw you can see the lower jaw and the fur area i use the lasso to, to separate the jaw from the fur and so i apply a soft airbrush in the jaw making the light and I invert the selection and then I make the darker area, also soft brush and ta-da, we have a clear selection, we have a clear separation between what is the school and what is this amazing and beautiful fur. 
About the city, champs whenever I have trouble drawing cities, I always think mainly of shapes. Don't let the lights get you crazy, okay? Think of a lot of vertical lines. Some of them are thick, some of them are really thin, and think of some of them just breaking down like those PC parts, you know, like vertical line and then horizontal line and vertical line. You can see that happening in the background. And for very far away light in the city, I made like random dots because you don't really see what is happening there and I don't want people seeing what is there. People forget that whenever you're making an artwork you cannot go and make a detail that is far away like I don't know how many kilometers away or miles. Don't, don't do that detail. Focus on making details on the place that you want your audience, your viewer to truly care about because if you're caring about a small detail, little one in the background, it means that you also want your viewers to care about that. And I believe if that's not true, I believe we should care about our viewer looking at the face since it's an icon, right? And after doing the ambient light, after doing the lights in the background and the format of the city and the cables and everything, I was ensuring myself that I understood what was close to the character and what was not close, what was far away. And to do that, I would need to make the contrast of each building lower and lower. The more far away it is from the character more the contrast is like ugh, nothing and the more close it is like on the edges on the right and left side you can see it has a big contrast really dark colors and really bright colors and in the middle of the city not as much and now let's go to what you guys really want the details the effects the everything the yesify face Okay, this yesify face. Me, myself, always love to start on the eye because this is the place that I feel the most relaxed and comfortable to do. Since the thing that I have been drawing for more than a decade, I feel good doing this. I recommend you also start by the place that you are the best, okay? Always start by the place you are the best. And so in this artwork, I start by the main eye, the one we can see fully, the format, and then I start doing some texture. And to do this texture, I was analyzing my reference. I was there looking, mm, there are random dots, there are random gradient, and there are random lines. So I was going to make the three of them all together. So I did random dots and then random gradient coming out of a line. So this could look like there's a small crashed part in the school, you know, some small crashed parts. And never forget, a total mix of soft brush, hard brush soft brush, hard brush. This was not entirely only soft and not entirely only hard. This was a pure mix and a lot of lasso too on the edges specifically. Specifically on the edges, yeah, I can guarantee you that. And when you break down into those patterns, you can start to see, oh, since here is receiving a lot of light, I'm going to make a gradient. Oh, since here is not receiving a lot of light, I'm just going to make a gradient but soft without details. In light, I make the gradient with details and shadows, low details, and this is the beauty. This is the beauty of understanding how light and shadow works. On the light, even when the light's coming from downwards, I make all of the school details on the light. And when it's on the shadow in the middle, nah, you don't see it. We don't need to see it. That's the best part of it. We don't need to see it. So we don't see it. Ah, <sighs> I love so much shadows because I don't need to be crazy doing details. So yeah, about the fur, I pretty much did a mix between Smudge 2 and Lasso 2. Lasso 2, it was on the fur, that it's on the cheeks, okay? On the cheeks, only one cheek. And then I started using Smudge 2, and not only Smudge 2, I also used the common brush on the fur in the main, I would say in the back the main and the back. When you do a mixture of smudge to and common brush, you get amazing results. And never forgetting all the little hair strands, the fur strands in the sides of the mane, because we need to ensure that this fur is well detailed. About the ears, it's really important that we understand if the light's coming from above and ears on animals, mammals specifically, then to be really transparent when they are close to light. I was like, okay, let's make that thing hardcore saturated 
saturated as possible upwards and down just take out saturation upwards i was there just going crazy on color dodge on overlay but downwards i was like eh, just ignore that area just just ignore it and about the effects that you guys love i had a layer of color dodge i had a layer of screen to make the effects of everything glowing i had a layer of blur in the background and I had a layer of small sparkles everywhere. And in that layer, I also add maybe another layer above it to make shiny effect of the sparkles. The sparkles is one layer and then there's another layer, everything in one layer, do the way that you feel more comfortable. And there is also the camera raw effects that I love using so much. About the psychological part, on this piece. I love to challenge myself and I recommend a lot you guys challenging yourself. I do this type of thing of trying to draw everything in one session the best I can to ensure that I'm focusing on the right thing. Sometimes we get lost so much trying to get everything and champs I don't recommend that. Don't try to get everything when you are having like crazy time. Uh, let me rephrase that. Don't try to get everything when you have a lot of time because there is a high probability that you're going to focus on that small detail in the background that is going to get you not far on the place that you really want. So staying focused on what really matters, asking yourself, hey, what is the part of this artwork that really matters is my biggest, is my biggest lesson from this artwork. And I ask you this, are you paying attention to the most important part of your artwork or you're there detailing something that is not necessary, something that is not even going to appear a lot in your artwork? Remember, the face is the main thing in this scene as an example. So in your artwork, what is the main thing? Am I detailing this enough? And if yes, am I detailing this correctly? Am I doing details on the light? Am I doing the light on the right place? Am I doing gradient on the right place? Am I doing light effects, neon effects, any effects on the right place, ring light in the right place? Always asking yourself those things and you're gonna see yourself so far away improving. Damn, you are amazing. And don't forget to learn art with me. Check out the link in the description, my all-in pack with more than 120 art tutorials. Save it streams and the whole stream of this art project that you watch in this video yeah you can watch it fully on real time speed get it now thank you very much for watching these are the final results and i'll be seeing you in the next one champs you're amazing Bye bye